always a maker of things. I was always interested in making things out of wood or metal or leather or whatever. When I discovered glass, I, I, I guess I was just fascinated by it immediately and kind of fell in love with it. I, I started blowing glass in St. Louis at Washington University in about 1981, and I was interested in having my own studio. Found this old building here in Augusta and started building furnaces. I'm Sam Stang, and this is Kaiko Maihata, and we're standing in our gallery here in Augusta, Missouri. We were both glass makers. My work is, is known for uh, clean forms and bright colors and bold patterns, often intricate patterns uh, interspersed with bold patterns, very fine detail often. The application of color and pattern probably come from things I've seen in nature. It, it, it can come from almost anywhere for me. I tend to use really vibrant, bright colors. A lot of other glass artists use more muted colors, more earthy colors, or more uh, tones. And I, I tend towards primary and secondary colors because it's what I really love, you know? We're gonna try to make the bottom of this thing be very, a sharp corner. So Kai is going to paddle and Miles is going to blow very lightly. Go ahead, everybody. Press harder. Press harder. Stop. The early days of American Studio Glass were basically a lot of free form, dripping glass around and calling it sculpture. And I, I wasn't really interested in that, and I didn't really have a great deal of respect for a lot of that work. What I was interested in was more the work that was being done in Italy, in Sweden, Scandinavia, which was designed by designers and made by master craftsmen. My interest was to be a designer and master craftsman all rolled into one, which is what I've been trying to achieve. Glass is a unique material because it, it has no form. So what, what I start with is a pot of molten glass, which is like honey. Well, in many ways, it's different from a woodworker or a metalworker who starts with a, a form and then has to remove material. And I have to enlarge it by blowing into it and shape it. But the material itself doesn't want to be symmetrical necessarily. It's trying to be asymmetrical. This technique, uh, which is, this is called reticello, and it's, it's basically a net pattern. And when I do shows, and whenever I have customers come in and see this, most people can't believe that this could possibly be made by hand, this, this technique. And I have to say this was developed in probably the 1600s in Italy, again in white and clear. Um, and it, it's one of the most complex patterns to make. Having a glass shop, glass studio, is very different from any other sort of art or craft studio that I can think of because it's so expensive to produce. My gas bill alone is enormous and my materials are enormous, but the majority of the work that you see in there, I'd say almost all of it, are things that, uh, that I wanted to make, that, I, that I'm interested in, and that I'm not too worried about having to sell them because that seems to take care of itself. I have to be efficient and I have to make each day count. Um, so I am forced to think about, at the end of the day, did I produce enough to make it all worthwhile? So I am forced to, to make things that fit in a price range. I actually find that to be a challenge. And that's a design challenge as well. What can I make that 
somebody who, who's not wealthy can afford and is still beautiful and is still something they'd want to own. Fortunate in that so far people have bought what I, what I like and what I want to make. Thank mm -hmm. you.